If you like to make your NFL games a little bit more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast. We are, of course, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years. Now I'm a broadcaster. I'll be in the booth. Out there, actually, Steve, I didn't even tell you this yet, Browns at Raiders. I'll be in Vegas this weekend on Sunday for CBS, then taking the red eye to Miami because I'm in the booth for Westwood One again on Monday night for the Tennessee Titans and the Miami Dolphins, two teams that are playing very, very poorly. You can check me out on social media, at Ross Tucker NFL. You can check us out at Ross Tucker Pod. This show is also always available on video, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Steve is the star of the show. He's a longtime professional sports better, a proven winner who you can check out on social media and only on social media at Fezzik Sports. Love how many patrons we're getting who want to see our beloved spreadsheet from our guy grades in black and white patreon.com slash rt media guys like heath coaster caleb lanker anthony abruzzo remember you don't need to write down all of our bets or whatever every week we've got them from grades it's 10 bucks a month you can do it for four months five months whatever patreon.com slash rt media You'll be part of the private Slack channel where grades post the spreadsheet. The good news is, Steve, we got a very popular podcast. The bad news is that we're struggling right now. And uh, week three, it was looking very promising. And then it got very ugly on Sunday night and Monday night. For the week, I was down eight units. You were down nine units. For the year, we're both down 11 units. We are matching 11. It started Patriots-Jets. We both leaned Patriots. Thankfully, that's all we did. Giants-Browns, though, we both leaned to the Giants. And by the way, we're trying to give you guys leans. For those of you that want to play more games, we're trying to give you leans if we have them. We both leaned to the Giants getting six. They won outright. Then we get to the teaser legs, Steve. We had three teaser legs that were good. We had a couple that were bad. Bears, Colts, we both liked the Bears up to plus eight. That was a good thing for us. The Bears lost by five. That was a real positive. We also both liked the Vikings up to plus eight and a half. They beat the Texans by 27 So our first two teaser legs, the Bears and the Vikings, were looking pretty good, Steve. Uh, Absolutely. And I got to mention on teasers, these favored teams, these teams favored by seven and seven and a half and eight, um, they have been terrible this year. There has been carnage in terms of favorites trying to win, so much so that in the Circus Survivor Contest, first prize is $14 And no big deal because everyone expected, ah, there'll be like a 10 or a 20-way chop. I mean, it's still a big deal, but the expectation was if you won, you'd make like a million dollars. Well, we started with 14,000 people, Ross. There's only 600 people left after week three. By latest projections, by my projections, I have there being a sole survivor at the end of week 19 coming home with a $14 million dollars a suitcase of money, not a suitcase, maybe eight suitcases of money. Uh, just incredible. Holy cow. Yeah, I think I'm over three on my larceny lock of the week <laughs> on the Ross Tucker football podcast. Bengals, Ravens, Bengals. I haven't hit one yet. I mean, think about that. I haven't hit one yet, which is just absolutely insane. And you're right. Those teaser legs are absolutely killing us. We move on. Eagles, Saints, we really didn't have a great feel for. Chargers, Steelers, Steve, is a conversation we have to have. 
You and I both liked taking the Chargers up to plus eight as a teaser leg. Loved it. We record this early on Tuesday mornings. We find out Friday that Herbert might not play with a high ankle sprain. He ends up playing but can't finish the game. Chargers were up 10-7. They lose 20-10. I cannot believe they allowed that deep pass to Calvin Austin. Otherwise, our teaser leg still would have hit and been good. I guess I want to get your thoughts, Steve, on the pros and cons. I know the pros are that we're hitting the number early, we're getting at it early, but we do get hurt and caught at times by injury information when we make these bets Tuesday mornings. Yeah, uh, it's it's helped us more often than it's hurt us. One thing I will say is that when you're teasing a game – and you've been very sensitive to the number, Ross. You know you want to tease when the line's two or two and a half, but not a plus three. Plus threes get blown out more often. And this line went to like a plus 2.75, meaning there's two and a halves and threes. And so lines that are two and a half are a little more dangerous to tease because if they should go to three, they go from good teasers really to bad teasers. Interesting. Why is that? It's going in uh, our favor. A three-point dog gets blown out, makes sense, a lot more often than a two-and-a-half-point dog um, because of the, 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 for a, a line to move from two-and-a-half to three usually requires information like that Herbert information that's negative towards the underdog. Very unfortunate because that uh, kiboshed a lot of our teasers because we round-robin our teasers, or at least I do, um, with our teaser legs. So that crushed a bunch of them. Broncos, Bucks, neither one of us had anything. Packers, Titans, neither one of us had anything. Panthers, Raiders, I put two units on the Panthers getting five points. Had faith in Andy Dalton. They won outright by 14. You leaned that way. And then our best, best bet of the week, Steve, was your call, the under on the Dolphins Seahawks was our crowning moment of the week presented by DraftKings. You said it. Backup quarterback for the Dolphins. I've seen this story before. We went under on Seahawks Dolphins and it cashed easily because the Dolphins couldn't score to save their life. Crowning moments is presented by DraftKings. Submit your winning bets for a chance to be featured. DraftKings, the crown is yours. So that was a good one, Steve. Then we get to Lions, Cardinals. I had the Cardinals as a teaser leg. You did not take the Cardinals as a teaser leg. That ended up coming through for me. So that was helpful. Ravens, Cowboys, nothing. Niners, Rams. You put one unit on the under. Somehow they started scoring points in that game even with all the injuries, and then uh, Chiefs-Falcons. This is another one I wanted to ask you about. We had the Falcons getting four and a half. They're down five points. They have the ball at the 20, but they need a touchdown so they don't kick a field goal. That's what I always say is the flaw of betting, Steve, is that the teams aren't playing to beat the number. They're playing to win the game. Yeah, and if you watch that game, I think the Falcons win the game. If um, they don't have their two linemen go out in the second half, which obviously compromised their offense, I almost feel like the Chiefs, they're 3-0. and They could be 0-3. I mean, they, they should be going to overtime against Baltimore if the dude had a size 12 shoe. And certainly against the Bengals, they're like 30% to win fourth and 16. And in this situation, just if they call the pass interference like they should, now Atlanta has the lead and Mahomes has the ball and maybe the Chiefs find a way to win by a couple or lose, but we certainly cover. Jags, Bills, I took the Jags getting five and a half. I called that game last night. The Jags total no-show. That was embarrassing. Commanders, Bengals was the other teaser leg that absolutely killed us. We liked the Bengals down to minus two. The Commanders won the game outright. Uh, Jaden Daniels is the real deal. So for the week, I was down eight. You were down nine. 
We were two and five on our best bets for the season. We're both down 11 units, and we are seven and seven on our best bets. Usually means, Steve, we are poised for a major, major bounce back, which I love. Speaking of love, I love westshorehome.com slash Ross. I've gotten two new bathrooms from these guys. I've gotten an entry door. I'm getting a new door to my office and garage area where I record the show from. You know why? Because they're awesome. I mean, they come whenever you want to talk about it, like at night because of my wife, 8 o'clock at night because my wife works. And then they do these jobs in a day. I mean, they can do it, put a new shower in, in your house in a day. Everybody needs those new awesome stand-up showers that have, you know, the shower pressure and everything. Right now, you guys can get free installation with 60 months, 0% interest. 60 months, plus only the people that listen to this show, you get the extra $500 off just by visiting westshorehome.com slash Ross. That's westshorehome.com slash Ross. Your wife will be so happy with you. She'll let you drink Labatt Blue Lights as much as you like. Drink Labatt Blue Lights with your wife, with family, with friends. Always enjoy responsibly beer. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All right, here we go, Steve. Let's dive into it. Week four in the NFL. We are poised for a bounce back. Starts Thursday night. Cowboys laying four and a half on the road against the Giants. Totals 44. I have a lean to the Giants again, getting the points at home, Steve. Yeah, and hey, the good news is oftentimes with my own picks, they're they're somewhat different than what I give out here on the podcast. So if you feel like, hey, if I just bought Steve's actual picks, I would have done better. No, this past weekend I went 5-11 and 11 on those. So it was very consistently bad um, with the teasers doing poorly and the sides doing poorly also. Here, I'm going to go with the Giants for two units, Ross. I make the game three. If I make the game three and I can catch three and a half, I'm going to bet it. If I can catch four and a half, I'm absolutely going to bet it. Don't trust Dallas at all. And let's face it, that week one game for the Cowboys is looking like the aberration. That their, their defense is very much looking like the Bengals' defense. Broken and this neighbors. I don't know if you've been watching, but Daniel Jones just closes his eyes and throws a rocket somewhere in the same area code and neighbors catches it in traffic every time it's amazing give me the g-men two units there's no i in football it's a we thing an experience best enjoyed together smirnoff knows that that's why it's the perfect vodka for crafting delicious cocktails easy to make and versatile for any and all fans over 21 they got a lot of good things going it's the world's number one vodka it's an official vodka partner of the nfl it's award-winning vodka, and they started in 1864. Grab a bottle of Smirnoff at your local retailer and head to Smirnoff.com to find recipes of delicious cocktails perfect for game day. Please drink responsibly. Smirnoff number 21 vodka distilled from grain, 40% alcohol by volume. The Smirnoff Company, New York, New York. Please do not share with anyone under the legal drinking age. He is very, very impressive, and kudos to the... Giants for utilizing him the way they are. Broncos, Jets. Broncos are getting seven. Total is a low 38 and a half, Steve. Yeah, so we've been burned on teasers, but I've got three that I'm going to use this week. And this is the first one. Very impressive what the Jets did. The Broncos, big upset victory. Well, let's see them do it back to back games. I think the Jets are absolutely going to the playoffs. I'm going to tease the Jets from minus seven down to minus one. I'm going to round robin my teasers this week. That's my first teaser leg. Ooh, okay. You know what? I'm going to take that as a teaser leg as well, even though we're not going through the seven. Jets minus one. I agree. Extra time after a Thursday night game. Broncos are feeling better about themselves after they won that game. Put me down for a teaser leg with the Jets down to minus one as well. Speaking of teaser legs, the Vikings are in Green Bay. The Vikings are getting two and a half. Totals 43 and a half. It's either going to be Malik Willis or Jordan Love in his first game back. Sounds like Darnold's okay. 
I like the Vikings in a teaser leg up to eight and a half, Steve. Okay, I'm going to disagree. I'm going to leave the Vikings off because I am confident that Jordan Love's going to play. He practiced two, three times last week. This is a huge divisional game, especially as well as the Vikings are playing. I'm going to lean over the 43 and a half, and I'm going to take the lead. That Green Bay is going to go up to like a, a, a north of a three point favorite, I believe, once Love is reported in. So I'm going, when I say north of three, it might be like 3.3 minus three, lay a dollar 25. So I'm going to take Green Bay minus two and a half, two units. Speaking of teaser legs, uh, I got a bunch of them this week. The Steelers are in Indy. Steelers are laying a point and a half. The total is 40. I like the Colts as a teaser leg up to seven and a half. Steelers play a lot of close games, a lot of low-scoring games. Colts kind of got their running game going a little bit. I do not trust Richardson, but I'm going to take the Colts at home, getting 7.5 as a teaser leg. You know, it's interesting. We're going a little bit head-to-head, but we both can win, which is the good news. I'm going to lean to Pittsburgh. I actually make Pittsburgh a three-point favorite in my numbers. It's all about that Anthony Richardson game. That was rough. Very rough against the Bears. Terrible quarterback play from him and Caleb Williams. By the way, I have good news and bad news, Ross. The bad news is I slept in and I got up minutes before this podcast started. The good news is I was up half the night preparing for it. So there's that. Nice. Eagles are at the Bucks. Eagles are laying two and a half. The total is 45. I really like the Bucks as a teaser leg up to eight and a half. Because the Eagles are pretty beat up, and the Bucks, I'm expecting them to bounce back from a poor performance at home against the Broncos. Yeah, so initially I made the Eagles a four-point favorite because they statistically crushed the Saints, even though they needed the miracle uh, catch by Goddard to um, wind up winning. They screwed up the game the rest of the way. But with both the wide receivers injured and the Bucks such a stinker last week, I agree. Go ahead and put Tampa Bay in on my teasers, round robins as well. Rams are plus three on the road in Chicago. The total is 41, Steve. Yeah, you know, I only make this one and a half, and I know the Rams are horribly banged up, but until Caleb Williams shows me he can play professional football, I am not buying into the Bears at all. Rams for two units. I'm with you. That's the best bet. Rams plus three, two units. A lot of faith for me in Sean McVay. That is a best bet. The Saints are getting two points in Atlanta. Totals 42 and a half. I don't know who the Falcons are to be laying two points against the Saints. It was a bad game for the Saints, but they were really good their first two weeks. They are yet another teaser leg for me. It looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven round robin teaser legs this week, and the Saints are one of them up to plus eight. So let me ask you, Ross, uh, normally, and grades knows, he grades all our plays. If we don't list the units, we always play two units as our baseline amount. With that many teasers, I'm going to play two units because I'll have fewer teasers. You'll probably play one unit per teaser and then on, on each one. You always say that. Why do you say that? Well, you're, you're going to have uh, warning, math coming. So you're going to have seven factorial divided by five factorial, two factorial in terms of your number of teasers. So that is by seven times six, 42. That's 21 different combinations. So I don't think you want to be betting 42 units. Um, I, I think you want to bet 21 units on your teaser exposure. Okay. Uh, grades. I'm doing one unit each. According to Steve, uh, I'll trust in Steve. Uh, one unit each on the teaser legs. Did you have anything on Saints Falcons, Steve? Total I do. 42 so I'm and a half. Tease New Orleans up to plus eight. Atlanta. Both these teams lost linemen, so they're both compromised. Given that, I think the under is the way to go. I'll go under. Uh, what, what are we at? Forty three uh, and a half. Forty two and play. a half. Forty two and a half. Oh, Forty two and a half. Ooh, one just one unit uh, under the forty two and a half. I lost the key number forty three. The Bengals are in Carolina in the Andy Dalton Bowl. The total is 47.5. Carolina's getting 4.5. I'm going to take them. Yeah, you know, the Bengals short week. Bengals defense is not good. The Panthers, uh, they, they believe now that they have a legitimate professional quarterback. Give me Carolina plus 4.5, two units. 
Yeah, so I make the game three and a half, but um, home momentum situation for Carolina. We saw how hard the entire team is playing, um, especially Deontay and Thielen. We'll see. We'll check on his health. But um, yeah, go ahead and give me Carolina for one unit. One unit for Steve, but it's still a best bet. Two units for me. Jags are getting six in Houston. Totals 45 and a half. No chance I'm betting on the Jags after that no show last night. Listen, these 0-2 teams, especially the ones getting points, other than Jacksonville, were just money last week, these winless teams. And they were such a no show. Something is just completely wrong with the Jaguars. Ross, you were there. Any buzz about what's wrong on passing the game? No. No, uh, they just were lifeless. They had no energy, and you could see it right from the start of the game. It was it was brutal. Patriots, Niners. Patriots are getting 10. Totals 39 and a half. I'm going to put one unit on New England getting the 10 points. They've had extra time to rest and prepare, and the Niners are just so beat up. Yeah, I wish the Niners hadn't blown that game, though, um, which makes me believe they're not going to let up on the gas. I actually make this game 11, so I can't play the dog. I will pass. Commanders are getting three and a half in Arizona. Totals 50 and a half. The belief that the commander's entire organization now has in Jaden Daniels after that performance, I think is gigantic. I will take that three and a half. You know, I love to do it. Two units, Washington. I agree. I'm not sure Arizona's better than Washington. They're, I certainly think they're in, in the same category. So I'm catching that plus three and a half. Absolutely short week. So just one unit, Washington. One unit on Washington, but it still qualifies as a best bet for us. What about the Chiefs? They're laying eight against the Chargers. Total is 39. I'm taking the Chiefs down to minus two as a teaser leg. Part of my round robin. The Chargers might be without both offensive tackles. That is not good, and Herbert's still banged up. Yeah, and Herbert's not going to play. So I I always, in situations like this, I actually spoke personally to Dr. Chow. I'm constantly talking to the SIC um, uh, injury folks, their senior analyst, Taylor over there, and I think Dr. Chow brought up a great point. The Chargers have a bye next week. And Harbaugh basically saw Herbert limping around. He wanted to keep playing last week. And he's like, can't play when you're limping. Let's get him healthy. I don't know if they're going to beat the Chiefs anyways. So without them, I think we're going to see, uh, who is it, Taylor Heineke now, right? Yep. That's uh, that's that's going to be playing big, big um, uh, um, drop, off. drop in power rating. So I'm going to tease Kansas City um, along with you in my round robin teasers. Another best bet there on that teaser leg. Browns, Raiders. Browns are getting a point in Vegas. The game I'll be calling for CBS. Totals 37 and a half. I have nothing and I have no idea after the way these two teams both played last Sunday. Dracula Frankenstein on these two teams. No thank you. I'll pass. The Bills are on the road. Sunday Night Football is a great one. Bills at the Ravens. The Bills are getting two and a half Totals 46. Buffalo has been a wagon so far. Give me the Bills as a teaser leg up to eight and a half. Wowza. Um, I just feel like Baltimore found their stride. And with the short week, I could see, yeah, but two and a half is too much. Buffalo's the better team. You know what? I'm aboard. Make this um, the fifth team I'm going to tease. I will be with you with the Buffalo teaser. But you're still doing two units for all of them? For five different yeah, teaser I'm, legs? I'm still only playing five. So I'm playing five factorial uh, 20. That's, t- that's 10 um, combos times two units. That's 20 units. Ross, you'll have 21 units on teasers, and I'll have 20 units. Got yes. it. Okay. What about Titans-Dolphins? I'll be calling that game as well for Westwood 1. Titans are getting a point. Totals 37, two bad football teams. Don't even have a lean on this one other than maybe the under. Yeah, we're going to play the under, um, and you can do better. You can get a better number than us at 37 and a half. I'm still going to go under for two units. I love the situation. So Miami obviously goes to a new direction with Hundley at quarterback, and Tennessee Levis has thrown back-to-back-to-back pick sixes basically, in the games, giving away touchdowns. And Tennessee's had punts blocked in two of their three games. They're going to be careful with the ball. 
Callahan's going to be screaming at Levis, and there might even be a quarterback change. Um, because of that, I expect ultra conservatism by both teams under 37, two units. The other Monday night game, it's the Seahawks at the Lions. The Seahawks are catching four points. The total is 46 and a half. I'm going to take the Seahawks getting the four points for two units. The Lions have not been overly impressive yet. The Seahawks have a very solid team and a good coach. Just like I like getting three and a half, I like getting four. Two units on the Seahawks. I think it'll be a close game. I'm going to pass this game because the Seahawks' strength of schedule has been such a joke. I mean, Miami without two is a terrible team, so they've had the easiest schedule in the NFL, and I can't get past that Detroit game where against Tampa where they lost, but they outgained Tampa by 200-plus yards, so I am passing Monday Night Football. That is how we do it on the Even Money Podcast. He's at Fezzik Sports. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. Good luck, everybody. Hope you guys win some money. Thanks for tuning in to Even Money. Make sure to also check out the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform.